not going to be a, a good hair day. Hello. Good We're morning. We're here. It's not oh. Tuesday or It is Wednesday. not. <laughs> I don't know what day it oh, is. Look, every, it, everything is dinging. It's TGIF. <laughs> yes, yes. And it's St. Patrick's Day, right? And it is. I did not wear green. Because look at me. I, I prepared. Yes. Because so. it's not safe in my house. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I had to goodness. be prepared. Yes. Um, so today we have kind of a special edition of Stitching with um, SNL. We are going to talk about uh, couching. So um, we have all kinds of stuff uh, that has to do with couching. Um, we have couching with sewing machine. We do. Feet. We have couching in free motion embroidery. And we have some new fan... Fin, fancy, fun, fancy features on the um, Solaris the top and of the, the line machines. Luminaires. Yep. So uh, a lot of really fun stuff yes. uh, for today. So um, I think we probably should just jump right in. I think um, we should too, because there's going to be a lot to talk about. And yep. if we don't start, we'll never get done. So let's put up our little PowerPoint first. All and right. we'll give everybody a little uh, sneak peek of what we are talking about. And let's make that a little bit bigger and lots of things. What else can I turn off here? <laughs> oh, there we go. All right. All right. There we go. And I, I even I, found the button. <laughs> <laughs> I found a new color slide in the I back. Like I like it. Pink and purple, purple together. Yeah. Yes. So. Couching. Couching. Yes. It's it's not complicated. It is not. Um, it it looks like it would be. Yes. But it's not, and it's actually a lot of fun. Um, whether you're doing it traditional free motion or in the embroidery hoop, mm -hmm. they're all fun. They're all. It's fun. just a matter of um, you know what type of thing that you are looking for. Mm -hmm. So um, we are. Uh, hi, mom. So uh, we're we're going to talk about all of those. Types yes. and show you how they work, what types of tools you would want to have to make those different types Absolutely. work. Absolutely. And, um, and we do have a couple features that are going to be exclusive to the Luminaire or the Solaris, um, but the technique itself is not exclusive to a correct. brother, a baby lock, a top of the line machine. So yep. um, the the definition for couching is basically sewing over top of threads or yarn. Um, so it's a technique where um, before we had embroidery machines, um, we would embellish things um, using the different types of fibers that we had in a zigzag stitch. Yep. So um, that was like BE, before embroidery, <laughs> BME, before machine embroidery. <laughs> So, you know, dec decorative stitching is not a new thing. No. It's been around for a really long time. It's just how we accomplish it has evolved. Yes. And um, more options have become available. Yes. So. Um, and some people still call um, decorative stitching embroidery. They do. Uh, um, so when we when have people we, looking we at have machines. The, <clears throat> they come in and, you know, we ask, are you looking for embroidery? And they say, yeah. And we're like, yeah, nope. Mm -hmm. Different. <laughs> we're different talking type. about we're a different talking type. We're A's mm -hmm. and B's and apples and oranges. But, yes. But, um, so let's talk about some different types. Yeah, so we have um, free motion couching. <clears throat> and again, not exclusive to Baby Lock or Brother. Um, lots of brands of machines have a version right. of a free motion, free, I can speak if I try really free hard. Free motion <clears throat> couching foot attachment. Yes, um, and most of them come with the same uh, selection of stuff. Uh, a lot of times you get a yarn guard did I say guide? Guide, guard, yes. You get a that yarn too. guide. Guard, guard <clears throat> would work. <laughs> <laughs> and then a special foot that usually has a hole in it. And then oftentimes something to help you feed the uh, yarn or your string through your foot. Yep. And keep it where you need it to be. Because honestly, if there's something that's hard, mm -hmm. that's the only thing is you have to have that. Yes in the right spot, otherwise yes. it doesn't work. Right, it becomes very because hard. Because your stitch misses it. Yes, So Absolutely. that's that. In all of the different techniques, mm -hmm. that's the only thing that really you gotta <clears throat> make sure is happening is that the yarn is where it's supposed to be. Absolutely. Or the thread or whatever it happens to be. And uh, when we're doing free motion quilting, we have a lot of control over where our needle position is um, because 
we can pick a decorative stitch even though we're doing free motion quilting. We still have lots of choices. Yep. Um, for us, when we do machine embroidery, we don't have a lot of choice where our needle position is because on Brother and Baby Locks, the needle position is on the left. It, it isn't is centered. It is a little left. Yep. <clears throat> so the same foot that you could potentially do free motion quilting for would not necessarily work in embroidery <clears throat> because of where the needle position is. So um, just something to think about if you're like, I have the couching one, so I'm, I'm gonna just do... gonna throw that on here yep. and, and embroider not with it. Everybody's machines embroider in the center needle position. So um, that is something to just be a just little bit aware of. Just be aware of and see what's happening before you hit go. <clears throat> yes. And then um, these are some of the traditional um, sewing and couching feet. There are lots, and we'll have some pictures yeah, of some we've, different we've feet. We've got some actual feet here. We're gonna show you when we um, get to that uh, topic. These, the ones that are there, that's just a couple of them. Yeah, there's there's tons more. And really, um, this is really, you can get very um, creative with the feet that you own. Um, Absolutely. I always tell people to look at the bottom of, like not like Isaiah right. Thomas saying, look up. <laughs> look at the <laughs> look bottom. Look at the bottom. <laughs> look, this is flip the those only, over. This is the only thing that I like when you just tell people, yes, go ahead and flip that over. Other, If it's a project and you flip it over and look at the back, I'm gonna smack you. Right, but, but, definitely, but you can definitely do this on your feet. Look at the bottom of your feet. <laughs> <laughs> looking for some sort of a groove or guide that will help you sew over your um, your yarns or your different threads. And there are a large selection of those. Yes. And so part of what foot you are selecting is mm -hmm. going to depend on what type of thread yes. or yarn mm -hmm. you are using. Absolutely. So, um, and maybe what foot you have is going to Dictate, um, dictate what yarn. <laughs> which yarn or thread you are using. Yeah, or so, what you go and buy if you don't have you, any of that exactly. in your stash. Yep. Um, and then we have this new thing called embroidery couching. Um, we started to get some of that information on our first upgrades for um, the Luminaire and the Solaris. And again, uh, embroidery couching is not exclusive to us. We are just talking about um, some extra stuff that they did give us that were geared toward embroidery couching. So um, other brands do have embroidery couching. We're not, we're not trying to say that this is exclusive. We're just trying to talk about some of the stuff that we received um, that, that was new to um, the Brother and Baby Lock line. Yep, what she said. <laughs> So if you are a lucky owner of either the Solaris or Luminaire and you bought when it was a number two, yep. or you had a number one and you bought the first upgrade, mm -hmm. you would have received the couching um, feet. Yep. Either the dual feed attachment for sewing mm -hmm. and the embroidery attachment. So both of those came with those machines. Yep, in that in that in upgrade. that version. So either in the upgrade or if you purchased a number two, mm -hmm. it came in the box, brand new. And we got so. some special embroidery designs we that did. were um, exclusive to couching. Yes. We have a whole menu for it. We do. It's a C menu. Yes. Imagine that. See me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the original one that came with either the number two machines or a number one upgrade, mm -hmm. um, are designs, so they're shapes of yep. different things. And then in this last piece, the number three upgrade or number three mm -hmm. um, machines or the visionary, if you are in the Solaris line, um, we also got um, an alphabet that is including numbers and uh, punctuation, which are fill stitches, which are, you can see a little bit, the, one, the picture on the right here is a little bit more what that would look like. Mm -hmm. um, that's not what that one happens to be, um, but that's more what they look like. Absolutely. So that's a little bit, um, kind of like the brief history of what we have for um, embroidery and couching. So um, let's go back to us. Hi. Hello, <laughs> Hello again. All right. Um, so if anybody has any questions, um, you can uh, use the chat uh, feature on there and yep. um, just plop those up and we will uh, do our best to answer those. Um, so it looks like we're streaming okay on both uh, Facebook and YouTube, and I'm guessing that everyone can hear us okay because we don't have Nobody anybody said, hey, can't hear you. saying so, okay. So um, um, I got a huge mess over here. Yeah, let's. <laughs> do you want to show some samples? We certainly yeah. can. Yeah, so let's go over to that. Let's move. And we're going to show a bunch of samples. 
So essentially, um, I moved all the camera stuff on you yesterday. So uh, basically where that gray mat is, is kind of in the camera Kind of my now. camera range? Yep. Okay. Hopefully that works. All right. So um, we've got yarn. <laughs> <laughs> we've got decorative threads. We're going to show you guys a lot of fun um, things. So oof, I'm going to get your stack back here. So these are some different uh, quilting blocks that were done. Some of them, are these all from? They're all from Stitcher's, Stitcher's Garden. Garden. They're just from my original Stitcher's um, Garden. So this is yarn and it was just done along the outside border of this block. She just was showing the sample of that so you can see how it was um, attached. When you are stitching, um, you're going to generally try to, unless you want it to show, which mm -hmm. is certainly a design choice as well, um, but a lot of times you're going to try to find a thread that matches your yarn or decorative piece so that you're not distracting from mm -hmm. that piece as well. I think I did that with red though, so you can you see did. it really blends. It's, it's almost hard. It is hard to see, but if it misses anywhere, mm -hmm. that's when you're like, oh, yeah. I should have done something else there. Um, and so if you do match it, then you can get away with a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we all have oh crap moments when yeah. we're sewing and embroidering that either we weren't paying attention for half a second because somebody asked us to question or mm -hmm. whatever the reason being. Um, so having a matching thread is certainly um, helpful. Um, and we're going to talk more about this later, but one of the things that I like this sample is, um, what do you do with the end of the yarn? Bury it. <laughs> you got to bury it. So um, we do have some large tapestry needles um, on their way here. I don't believe they've shown up yet, but um, one of the things that you would do is feed this through and then literally take it to the back and tie it off. Um, but sometimes that doesn't work based on yep. um, the project or maybe the back of it's going to be seen too and you don't want that to be the case. So in this instance, she literally has a pocket um, and she could bury the end inside the actual fabric and press it in so that it wouldn't come loose. So that is another alternative way to do that. So again, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more. Um, you'll see lots of edges yeah. <laughs> of yarn today. So, um, but the, honestly, that's probably the most involved part. Yeah, really. <laughs> is, is take, is the finishing aspect Choosing of Choosing your that. thread and Choosing then. Choosing it uh, and, and burying, burying it. the ends. So um, yarn and following the edge. I mean, how cute is that? And it just adds so much, but it's so... A little dimension. It's, it's just a little dimension, but not complicated mm -mm. to follow that along. Did you do this with, um, I would assume, just a regular sewing foot? Yep. Yep. So regular, not free motion. Um, and then um, you want to talk about this because you did it. Um, yeah. So um, this is using um, the... We have like a... There's like a three, a five, and a seven hole. They call it a cording foot. Um and there are little holes in them. Yep, that's one of them. And that's one, yep. So um, there are little grooves in the three one. And yep, and then there's uh, holes in the other one. And so you would, um, you kind of fish your yarn um, in this instance, I think, um, what is that? That's like crochet yarn. Yeah. Um, so you kind of fish that through the holes. It's very thin. Yep. So um, feeding that is also something we will talk about yep. in a few minutes. Yep. Um, and how, you know, how do you get that through those, those different spots, which exactly. is not necessarily fun. So we'll talk about that in a few um, as well. But you have to, of course, get that through your spot, whether yep. it be yarn or... Um, a thinner, uh, like an embroidery thread or something mm -hmm. like that, not uh, floss, that's the word I was looking yep. for. Yep. Um, all kinds of things that you can do this with. Yeah, so. and so when you are working with um, any type of couching, you need to have a stitch that moves left or right. Um, the three-step like uh, stretch type stitches um, for like standard zigzags and things like that, they work really well 
um, to do the, uh, you know, like, because your needle moves sort of um, uh, to the left and to the right, and it takes steps. So um, you, and obviously not all stitches will work with this. So you do have to play along, around with that. Um, Barbara, I, yes, I did call that um, crochet yarn. Um, um, it, it's, it's, um, <laughs> it, they, you're, you're going over top of something, um, whether it be uh, the string-like things. Um, because of the feet that I used for this, you would need to use um, this type a of thinner. You couldn't use a, a full fledged yarn, right? You would not you know, get a typical it. yarn. You're going to make a, a scarf or something like that out of. You're never going to fit it through there, no matter what you are threading with. It's no. not going to work for that type of, of piece. No, you definitely would like you need something that is um, thicker than string, um, you know, or thread, but not as thick as actual yarn. Right. Um, and so that is what you would want to use if you're using those cording type feet. And this is going to be something that you're going to be used in a sewing technique. Yes. You wouldn't want to use this style of um, thread or whatever we want to call it. You wouldn't want to use this thin stuff when we're doing the embroidery stuff because it will not fill. It's not going to fill the space. It will not fill the space. So what you would end up with is a lot of missed places. Right. And it would also not fill the stitch. Yes. So you would have stitches literally on the left and the right mm -hmm. or depending upon where it landed. Exactly. Far right or far left or yes. something like that. But you need the heavier yarn. And again, we're just showing samples. You'll, we'll, we'll talk more we're, in detail we're as show we go. All of these, yes. um, but um, this is a sewing technique, not yes. an embroidery hoop technique. Yes. So. Um, and I think uh, the word I was looking for is these are like pearl crown um, yep. strings. So, uh, yeah, there's nothing in there. I can't tell you. No, no. Um, but, but it's like pearl. But they're pretty. <laughs> yeah. I really like them. And uh, they come in all kinds of different colors. Um, and they kind of are for like making doilies and, and types of things like that. Absolutely. So, um, um, and I would like to just show that this is done over fabric. So I is. don't know if you guys can see that right here. You can see the batik underneath there. Um, so it doesn't have to just be free of everything else. Right. You can use it to embellish on something, you know, and to add a little bit of dimension and color mm -hmm. to something as well. And I don't know if maybe if we zoom in a little, would that show, um, it doesn't show the detail really well. It, it's not coming out very. Yeah. I mean, I'm. That's better. So you can kind of see there the are. The back and forth of the stitches. Yeah. And there's a couple strands of that in there. So um, that, there you go. It kind of zoomed in all of a sudden. It's so that, that's focusing. better. I'll try not to move. Yeah. So, um, and that's just, like I said, like a three-step zigzag stitch that's kind of going um, over to the left and to the right, sort of like that serpentine stitch. It's actually just like the stitch to the left of it that you can see in the batik fabric. Um, I just, that one was done with a twin needle and this was done with a standard needle, but it's the same stitch. Oh, yep, I can see that. Um, that I actually used uh, on so there, it's, so. It's this serpentine stitch, yep. you can see it moving. Back and forth. The, um, yep. But of course, you used like a variegated thread or something. I did, there, yeah. So it's hard so to, it's hard to, to tell. Um, yep. But that is, again, just you using something that is a little bit um, thinner um, because the sewing feet give me the option to do that. Yeah, they're just kind of stuck. So the batting. Like, what do we got going here? Yeah. Yep. Um, just trying so, to keep the cat hair off the batting. <laughs> gotcha. So this is. A different stitch being used. Yeah, that is like the feather stitch, um, which is, um, I think maybe if you look at the back of it, you can see it. Yep, there's the little stitch. A little easier to see the stitch, maybe. Um, but it's kind of like a blanket stitch, but it kind of it a, angles, it out, angles out, um, kind of like bird feet, I guess. <laughs> so you can see it's just. Um, but it gives, you know, it's got like the yep. points going as and she went around. Both directions. And it kind of smushes the yarn down. Yep. And you're basically using like a center needle position. Um, 
Yep. And, and then keeping adjusting. your yarn as center as possible yeah. so that it's catching everything Absolutely. as you go around. And then this one, um, there's a different stitch. As a totally decorative stitch. Yeah, just a completely decorative just stitch. Just a very decorative stitch. It's really flattened it, but it's still a yarn that's in there. Um, I don't know how well you can see that with the dark fabric next to it, but um, trying to get some light in there. Can yeah. You see that? A little bit. So lots of variation, even in what stitch that you've selected to attach said decorative thread, yarn, mm -hmm. whatnot. Yep, so you, you can really change. Um, you just need to pick something that literally has needle positions that move um, from left to right. Um, and if you are trying to smush it down a little bit more, or if you have more than one strand of something in there, you need it to not be a standard zigzag. You need you need the needle to go in the middle between the most left and the most right. Um, otherwise it will not right. catch the pieces and your yarn or your string or whatever will slide around in there. When you have yarn like Lisa has here, um, you are, um, you are, have a greater chance of catching it. Um, so this was actually, did that. I did do a straight, straight stitch. stitch. Um, the, I, I prepared for this class. I watched a lot of videos <laughs> um, to see what some different um, brother and baby lock people were doing mm -hmm. with different things. Um, and so when they were using this foot, they did do a straight. And I thought, all right, I'm going to give that a go and see yep. if I can actually catch the darn yarn doing a straight stitch. Um, and it does keep it so centered by using it. It mm -hmm. wasn't too bad. That's um, good. It caught pretty much, every, but it's certainly way easier with, I, would, I don't know that if you're not going to go really slow. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, you, the faster you don't want to go. go the, yes. If you were trying to do a super fast stitch, um, straight probably would not be your friend because you're going to have an easier slip. Yeah. Um, and, and straight not, definitely doesn't work when you're doing free motion quilting. No, most definitely not. Um, so this was done, um, again, regular sewing with this guy here. And um, I started with just a line. Um, I think this one is the one I started with and then I looped off and came back around. So it's, um, you can see the, the straight, there's actually a smush in the center. It was a darker blue. Maybe you can't, I don't know. Um, yeah, you can see a little bit now. Um, so there is a straight stitch right through the center there. The sparkle kind of makes it harder to see, but, um, that one, you can see the blue. Yep. Um, so that was what I did there. And then, you know, this would be a lot of fun to do like a, a wallet cover or mm -hmm. a bag or something like, you know, just to do a bunch of real decorative pieces. And then your edges would be sewn in so you wouldn't have to worry about them. Exactly. <laughs> that would be the nice thing about doing something like that is not having to worry about all of the, the raw edges of, you know, if you sew them into a seam, then obviously you're, you're, you're covered. Good. Yep. So you don't have to worry about that. So this was just um, batting and fabric. And I just doodled. There was really no plan there at all um, and just some decorative stitching. And that was, again, just using this guy here. So um, I would not even think about attempting this type of nope. what we were talking with that straight yeah. stitch. There's absolutely you no way. You would never catch it. You would never, ever catch it. So just um, FYI on that. Um, I don't have any more sewing. Is that one free motion? Um, this is an embroidery design. Um, do we have a free motion? I do not okay. have a free motion. I do have that little flower that we were going to do in a minute. And okay. then, um, you can kind of see the, uh, the decorative stitch that I used a little bit better on that one. So this a little more was actually a, a convention <laughs> yeah. panel of different things that, um, were out. So we've got some heavier cording here. Um, you can see what was being put down and with a decorative thread um, that didn't match, um, you can see the, how's that? It's pretty good. There you go. All right. So um, a nice little back and forth, tacks that down really nice. 
and there's a balanced one that's just going around that sash kind of thing and that's mm -hmm. so really fun way to add that in and add a little pop kind of some crazy quilting yeah. uh, concepts mm -hmm. um, in there and then this center piece here is um, some of the embroidered designs that are um, built-ins yep so we're actually going to stitch this one in a little bit so you can see how that works it's a little rose mm -hmm. um, there and then a butterfly uh, it's got your little body and the wings of course over here so yep. um, super easy yes um, when it comes to that you don't have to have um, a big plan mm -mm. because a lot of that can be just kind of flowing as mm -hmm. you are going it it can just be going around edges like we were talking about with the quilt squares and things um, if you have a specific thing in mind you can create mm -hmm. um, which we're not going to talk about how to create mm -hmm. um, just that you can so um, this is a embroidered piece and I had a line design of a sewing machine and I ended up doing this in the software. It took, I don't know, two minutes to trace it. And um, it just needs to be a complete line is the idea. And so that is um, couched. It's just on a tank top so I can, I can sport my sewing machine um, <laughs> this summer, maybe. <laughs> you guys know I'm always cold, so it won't be before <laughs> summer. But um, so that is a created couching design. Um, and I actually used a blanket stitch um, in the software. It was an applique. Mm -hmm. And I deleted the placement and the tack down line and just left yep. the blanket stitch and spaced that out so that it, it caught those pieces. I love to um, couch with the blanket stitch. It really gives a fun uh, feature to it. And it's pretty easy. Yep. Um, the yarn is pretty forgiving. So that's a great, yep. great stitch to use. So um, again, you see my tails. I'm going to have to deal with my... my uh, my icky ends. I'll have to deal with those. I'm waiting for that needle to get here. Yep. <laughs> um, because this one is going to be washed, obviously. So we definitely need to make sure that that is finished properly mm -hmm. because it's going to get washed and it will fray out and we'll lose Absolutely. Um, the yarn attachments. This one here I created, um, you saw the picture earlier in the, um, the screen thing there. This is the bottom wiring of that dress form. Mm -hmm. And I did just draw these actually in the machine. So I did use the design center um, and I just drew. So the pattern was already drawn on here and I just drew the lines. And then um, I used one of the kind of looks like a blanket stitch, mm -hmm. not a blanket, a uh, blind hem stitch mm -hmm. in the design center was the one that I used in there. And um, I did just cut the ends here because this is just a wall hanging. It, it's not going to get washed, but very, very randomly. And I can yeah. do a gentle washing on that as needed. So I did just trim the ends here. I didn't worry about treating them, um, but I did create this um, actually at the machine. Mm -hmm. And then um, just scanned in my hoop, took a picture of it, put it on screen, drew my line and stitched it. So yeah. So um, creating the lines in your sewing machine is a great way to do that. Um, but here is the Here's the here's the, the downside. The downside, um, and there is a downside. No matter how effectively you draw your lines, right? You, you can't start control. here, you move <laughs> here, you go down here. When you move from the design center to the embroidery, uh, the it, computer it decides. does something like scrambling an egg, and it will go essentially wherever it is. It is a complete mashup. Yes. So the only way that you can really control the line is would be literally if you did this line, saved it as an embroidery file, <laughs> this line right. saved it, and then you opened the designs in the in appropriate the order that you order. wanted them to be in. Yes. So Design Center um, does not allow us to, to designate where to start and stop. Um, and the order in which the it order stitches. in which it stitches. So the only way to do the tank top design in the machine, because I did that, and mm -hmm. it's, it it looked perfect when I went to stitch it out. It started in the middle, and I was like, "Yeah, that's not going to work." Yeah, and we can't change. <laughs> I, that. I need one complete piece, right? Mm -hmm. 
Um, so you need an edge to edge design. I, <laughs> Oh. <laughs> we'll talk about that tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I um, the only way I could have done that is just to bring in the design picture yes. and have drawn it as one continuous, continuous line. line. And I think that would have worked, but even that, it might have decided somewhere along the line to shake the eggs. Yeah. Um, so Scramble I ended up eggs. drawing it in software because I knew that would work. Yeah. Um, and why waste my time on something that I wasn't sure was going to work. Exactly. So, um, but I do have it in the machine. You guys can see the picture of the line design that it came from. If you would like to, when we get there, mm -hmm. um, we can throw that up on the screen. Um, but it's, it's not that it's hard, right. but you have to pay attention, but we're not going to teach you how to do that. Sorry. Yeah. We're not doing software not today. today, but nope. we are telling you that you can learn to do that. And really, um, if you know a little bit about your software, and you learn a little bit about couching, you can apply what you know about couching. It's one of the easiest designs I think I've ever created. To your software, yes. Yeah. And again, the key is, with the exception of the straight line that you did with that walking foot, because it's a walking foot and your needle and was going, going straight. It's not going anywhere. Right, and you can't really kind of shift it. Almost every you're time. You're not going to want a straight line. You're going to use some sort of left right motion stitch, We're whether it's a blanket <laughs> stitch or a zigzag stitch. We got our washers. Yeah. Wipers are going. You'll want, because you'll have better control and you will catch the thread more often than not, than if you try and a straight stitch. I can attest that if you miss, your design does not look right. Right. And you will be sad. We yes. don't want any sad people. Yeah, so. I mean, if you're trying to do a curve and it doesn't catch, it doesn't catch then your that yarn curve, goes diagonal until the place and that you it, lose that yeah. that whole piece. It now doesn't look like what it's supposed to look circle like. Circle so, looks like a square. Um, you guys probably have heard me say pedal to the metal like all the time. I actually slowed my machine down for this because <laughs> it was so small. I wanted to make sure, sure. that mm -hmm. I wasn't speeding around a corner right. that it pulled too tight or something, yep. um, which... I'll say this a couple of times today, making sure that your yarn has the slack that it needs to be mm -hmm. able to go where it wants to go yes. is very, very important. If you have a, a snag or mm -hmm. you're not paying attention um, and it gets really tight, it's not gonna go where it's supposed to go either. So making sure that you have that slack in the, in the feed mm -hmm. is very, very important as well. So we'll say that again, yes. I'm sure. Because, yeah, uh, oh, for sure. Um, it's super important. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so um, let's start sewing. Yeah, um, um, let's do so that. So what are we going to start with? Um, well, uh, do you want to start uh, with a regular foot? Because that's... Yeah, um, that sounds fantastic. Or do you want to start... Are we going to need one of these? Um, we might. Or do you want to start in embroidery? Because we have um, an embroidery foot on and we're in embroidery. Yeah, let's go backwards because okay. we're already there. So um, we're still gonna have to change. Feet, yeah, though. we have to change the foot, but we I already have that embroidery design up on the okay. screen. Okay. So, so I have a bag of goodies stuff over here. I've got some different yarns, and this is basically the couching kit that came with um, my luminaire in my upgrade because I have a one that I've upgraded along the way. So this is my sewing. Um, pieces. So I have the, this was my homemade. <laughs> I lost my yarn threader. So I made a new one. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm going to mooch. <laughs> totally going to mooch. Um, so this is the foot that goes on your dual feed. Um, and this is the yarn guide or guard if you want to say right. guard um, <laughs> that goes with the sewing aspects of that. So we'll just tuck that in here for, that is that portion. And my watch wants me to do something more than sit on my duff. All right, and this is the embroidery. So you actually have a different yarn guide for the two. And I am calling them yarn um, because it's not pushed in. I was just getting it out of my hand. Okay. So, um, and maybe the other camera. Does that shoot that far? Or it no? will, but I think we can also zoom out, out on that. Yep. Almost. Almost. So right here, um, there is a hole in the um, lid that this little box here, this little square that my thumb is playing with right there, and it just sits right in that square, 
and it sits right in place. So it's now in place. There's a little rubber guide here, so it sits against the machine, but it won't scratch it. Um, and there is a uh, metal piece that sits on the top of the machine here. So I'm going to do that again. Um, maybe. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. We haven't had that in a while. No, we haven't. Whew. So um, this sits, we've got that um, square again, it's right here. And there's a hole right here. And it literally is just a square hole. And it's, it's not a round peg, it's a square <laughs> peg that goes in the square hole and, then you and just it snaps in place. Push it down. And there is a lever here that keeps it from angling. Mm -hmm. And um, again, there's a little rubber piece there that keeps it from rubbing on the machine itself. So that is where we're going to feed. I know there was a screwdriver over, oh, it's right here. I'm like, I saw a screwdriver somewhere. Um, we'll probably want to zoom back in on that. So we are taking off the standard embroidery foot and we are going to put on the embroidery couching foot. So it's got a much different center point here and it also has this guide out the left side of it. The first time you use this, there is a screw um, on this side here. You're going to want your needle slightly to the left of that hole. You do not want it in the center of the hole. You want it slightly to the left. So um, you only need to do that once. <coughs> so sorry. God bless. <laughs> All these things. <coughs> Oh, goodness. Sorry. God bless again. All right. So we have that tight. Um, we do need to thread with a regular thread because we have to have something to mm -hmm. keep it on there. You got that? Yeah. Let's put you over here. Nope. Oh. I think if I plug the cabinet back in, I can raise the uh, cabinet. It's fine. Up I just end. forgot about it. It's not a problem. So we are just, um, we're just threading the machine normal right now, not doing anything uh, super fancy, just so a regular Just old... a little heads up, the, uh, the little bar there. <laughs> kind of gets I'm, in your way. I'm a big swinger to get yeah. that cutter on that side there, and I can't tell you how many times I've hooked that thread in that little... <laughs> yarn hook over there. Um, so we are choosing to stitch with red thread um, so that you guys can kind of see it a little better than you would normally see it. Um, but even that isn't going to be um, all over the place. We have this beautiful pink. We have a standard embroidery bobbin in. Nothing uh, fancy there. This is just cutaway and a piece of, what is this? This is Kimberbell's Silky solids. Mm -hmm. Which one you want? Um, Blue or teal? Let's do teal. Teal it is, because Sarah said so. All right, so you, they, they tell you to do this, and it's all well and good, but then they also tell you to make a big pool so it's nice and loose, <laughs> um, which this is more important honestly than that. You really need to make sure, like I was saying, that that um, can move freely and not get caught. So what you really want to do is get that set up, but then unwind a portion so that there is no knot, that you don't have this big old knot kind of thing happening. So you want to make sure that it is going to and then just kind of lay it all there. There is then a hook at the top here, and then there's a hook at the bottom here. So that is going to guide it from the top of the machine down here. And then we have an additional hook, like I showed you um, when I pulled it over to the, the camera, there's a little hook. It's kind of like a pigtail. Yep. I'm sorry, I can't quite zoom in on that one, guys. And I can't quite get my fingers on it. Maybe. Okay, but. All right. So, 
we want to have that then running underneath. And so now we have our thread almost to the needle. So we're, we're pretty close, but it needs to go actually through that foot. The other thing that I, um, I do like to have my thread through there too because it, I find it a little, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe I'm just OCD about it. I don't know, what do you think? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. So um, to get my thread through, I think we can just do yeah. this and we'll get that. That's what I did at home. All right, Let's so. can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> so Sarah has this really um, awesome little container of um, guides, uh, threaders, and um, these are really fantastic. What uh, I have already lost <laughs> is yeah. the piece that came with my couching. So you really need to have one of these. The one that came with your um, kit, if you have it, is wire. Mm -hmm. So, like, and it's metal, so it's really easy uh, to lose. It's it's just you. I am a hundred percent sure it was in one of these little bags, mm -hmm. and I pulled it out with and when I pulled my foot out, yeah. and there it went, and I have no clue where it ended up. Um, I did create a new one out of um, jewelry wire, mm -hmm. and it worked. It's what I used last night when I made the T-shirt thing. Um, I also created a, um, what do we call this, cradle? Yep. From, um, this is what I used here yes, uh, Wednesday at the shop. So you can also create something out of yarn, or not yarn, thread. Yep, that stuff, thread. Um, and I just made a knot and then I fed the, of course, single part through where I wanted it to go mm -hmm. and then looped my yarn through there and then pulled and everything went through just fine. Yep. Which that is all um, we are doing here at this point. We want everything to go through. So we are going to put the base of the threader through your, uh, the hole in the foot. And then you're going to feed your yarn into that loop and pull. And lo and behold. And that is so much easier than trying to fish that through with your yeah, hand. Yeah, if you are trying to use tweezers or something like that, let me tell you, it is not fun. No, it is not. Not fun at all. So. Um, um, I, I have had this pack forever. It's by Dentech. I think they're like, um, they're some sort of flosser. Um, I had these when I had my braces. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so like I have had these for a really long time and then um, I just glommed onto them when I was looking for something else uh, as a threader so and I just stole one yeah there's <laughs> I think there was like 25 or something in this pack so there um, but I'm, I'm certain sure they're still out still there find them yeah. so um, we have a tail of both the thread and um, the yarn that we have loose. So it doesn't necessarily matter which direction. Um, I'm looking at where it's gonna start. It's gonna start in the center um, and go around. Is it? Uh, yep. I think so. Uh, the needles, there we go. So, maybe not. There we go. Um, what I have done is I hit my needle plus minus and I go one so that I always know where it's going to um, start. So this is, um, I, I know exactly where it's going to start to stitch and so I can make sure my tail is not going to be where I don't want it. Um, <laughs> um, so that's, that's what I have been doing when I'm doing couching so that I know where I'm at and mm -hmm. then I can guide it towards uh, Wherever you where I go. don't want it to go. Exactly, exactly. So, um, this is Again, right through the hole, um, I have my, my needle is threaded, so I have something that's going to attach it. So again, we are doing a built-in design. Mm -hmm. This is that pretty rose that we showed you on that other sample. We want to make sure that we have um, plenty of thread up top, not thread, yarn. Yarn, I can't seem to get the two that's of them right. straight. Yep. So that is nice and loose so that it will not- Probably um, not stuck on our feet over here. So that it won't um, be, uh, too tight to feed and do that. So what happens is if it gets stuck over there and it gets tight here, then when you go to start sewing, 
you start stitching without any yarn. Yeah, um, I know this will shock you uh, to know how slightly anal I am oh, about no. this part, but I actually like loop my In a circle. thread Oh, my oh, yarn that. over this. I like it. Um, and then I put like a ton of it there and I kind of just loosely do that. And then I like that better than up. making the mess. Um, because I, um, when I have this, it gets caught on stuff. I, I, I catch it on everything, but mostly I catch it on the cat. This <laughs> is, uh, this is like, oh gosh, mom. <laughs> That's but he a fun toy. He seem to mind. This looks like a ball to him. Gotcha. So, well, I don't uh, have a cat, so yeah, if that's you probably have animals, why I haven't run into that. But, <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> um, even my dogs are not allowed in my sewing room, so even that I do have animals, they're not, they're not allowed. I'm so mean. <laughs> you cannot come sew with me. Um, but anyway, I, I love that. Um, yeah. And I, I actually have done a little bit of that when I first, when I was doing larger projects, mm -hmm. um, and I knew I needed more than just a little bit. Yep. Um, you definitely need to plan because you don't want to have to stop part, part way through and uh, figure mm -hmm. out what's going on with your thread, so. Um, and this is one of those projects where you probably don't want to walk away. Absolutely, that's not even a probably. Do not walk away when you're couching. Yes. You need to make sure that your yarn is where it needs to be, and you need to make sure that your yarn is not going to not be where it needs to be. So mm -hmm. keep an eye on it, and again, I. This I didn't read that moving to plus one anywhere. That is just something that I have found yeah. helps because then I don't have a tail that's accidentally gotten sewn in or and I know what direction it's going to go in because yeah. um, to my experience, couching ga uh, stitches are all one long stitch. So uh -huh. if you know where you're going to start, you know where that tail needs to go. Absolutely. So uh, that's it. Let's start. Let's go for it. Yep. All right. Let's push the button. Push the button. So we have um, this beautiful, I love this teal thread. Yeah. This, this yarn is so pretty. Um, and we are using, again, a built-in design. This was in um, Luminaire or Solaris 2s or upgrade number one, if you have that. That's where this design came from. And this stitch is like a triangle, so it kind of goes uh, left, right, and then like forward center um, in, in literally like a three-pointed triangle. Which is great because that means you're getting multiple options of making sure your thread, your yarn is being caught. caught by the thread, yeah. So, and that's why we were talking about um, having a right and left dimensional stitch when you are couching and how much that um, will help in making sure that everything goes well. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that I would attempt that straight stitch with was that digital dual feed yep. with that guide. Um, that is the only thing that I would recommend doing that with. Yep. Absolutely nothing else. And the machine automatically slows down for this um, because it, it, it was a, it's a pre-programmed built-in right. thing. So if you are creating your own stitch, um, your machine You're gonna slow will it down. not automatically slow down. So yeah, that's so, just something to pay and attention to. Like I to. said, I did that. Yes. <laughs> you guys know I don't normally do that, but I most, I was absolutely, yep. you, you definitely want to make sure that because you don't want it pulling too fast mm -hmm. and not catching the yarn. That's the whole point yep. um, is we need to give it the time to get that yarn underneath where it needs to go. And um, it's so cute. Um, you really don't even see, um, I mean, you can see You can see the, see the red, red a little bit, but not much. Yeah, not very, very much Very, very light. We'll hold it up so you guys can get a closer view. Um, this yarn is really uh, splitting, which yeah. is actually really pretty. It gives you it a- It gives a very dimensional look to it. Yeah. I really like, um, the sparkle in the yarn. Mm -hmm. So the, the couple things that I have done personal projects with, yeah. I have pulled sparkle yarn in. This yarn is actually what we purchased for our block of the month. Um, and um, yeah, it's got a lot of different, um, it's, it's got, got like a- It's got a little bit of uh, speckles in yeah. it. And uh, the only reason that there was no sparkle is because trying to find the amount of yarn that we needed <laughs> oh god was yeah. um that was limiting it was limiting yeah. so um to get 
you know, 65 spools of, mm -hmm. 62 spools, not yeah. 65, but 62 spools of yep. the same. <laughs> <laughs> we just ran out of bobbin thread. Yeah, we're very that close. is also something that you should check before you start. Yeah, um, I think we're almost done with this stitch. Let's just um, turn I'm that turn off. Turn the and bobbin go for it. monitor off. Yep. yep. We're going to play bobbin chicken. It'll be on the other side, right? Right there. All right. So we're going to just keep going. <laughs> Fingers crossed that it, it'll make it. We're so close. There's always bobbin left. So we'll be okay. But. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. I had something and it just went bye bye. We'll remember in a minute. Yep, it'll come back. This yarn looks beautiful on this. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, on the, on the that salad background. Background, whatever yeah. color that is, I don't remember what it's called. But it's really, really pretty on it. Okay. Yeah. All right, so when we finish an embroidery design, we talked a little bit about needing to finish your um, your edge, your end pieces. So, the song has been sung. So what we really want is we need a tail of yarn so that we can bury it into that. So you would need to have some form of a, uh, like a tapestry type needle, a large eyed, um, larger needle that you can then take and feed that through right at the point of your finishing mark. And so we would need to do that twice, once at the beginning and once at the end. Okay. Um, and so that is the um, finished design there. So again, to completely finish that, we need to bury our two, our beginning tail and the end tail. But you can see um, how it, it really kind of different yarns will behave differently. I love the variation that we got here. You got a lot of definition um, and it kind of started spinning a little bit. We've got some really uh, 3D effect going on there. I absolutely love how that looks. So to completely finish this, again, you need a tapestry uh, type needle. If you um, don't have that, you could get a smaller needle um, and use your threading wire or something, but it's certainly going to be much easier if you have a larger one. So, um, and finish both the beginning and the ends by pulling those to the back and then um, tying those off in the back so that they don't come undone. So that is a embroidery couching. It is done in the hoop. So the piece, since um, she had to step away for just a second, I don't remember which, uh, that one and it's not going to go down there that far. I was going to show you the screen, but we're not there yet. So we'll come back to that one in a little bit. So um, completing a, a design is, is certainly straightforward and easy. The finishing is what is going to be. Um, it's cold. Wasn't on that sheet. Ah, not too bad then. So I just took that out of the hoop. And we're going to set that aside. So um, we'll just need to finish that. And that can then be placed into whatever home it's going to be put in. Um, so Sue is asking, where are the built-in couching designs? All right. So lower that. Um, I'm going to attempt to lower this and give you a better option. Um, but they are built right into the embroidery part of your machine. Um, all right, so, um, I know there is a terrible glare on here, but hopefully this will give you, um, an idea. So I'm on the embroidery screen right now and I'm going to go back to home 
and then you're going to touch embroidery. And then on the screen over here, I know it's very hard to see this. I'm gonna, maybe if I tip this a little bit. So right here is, um, you can see the C up at the top. So again, we're on our home embroidery screen. And when we tap that, it brings you into your couching menu. And if you have um, upgraded to three, you have your original menu and the new menu. So these are the built-in shapes. And you can see they're all single line designs. There's that butterfly that um, was stitched out on that other sample. There's some really great um, simple things here that you can add into lots of different pieces. These would be great in quilt squares. Mm -hmm. um, you got lots of really great things. But in addition to those, we got an entire alphabet, upper and lower. And then we also got numbers and punctuation. So these are decorative couching fill stitches that were included. So we can really do a lot of different options on, um, whoa, that's blurry. Look at that fingernail that's missing. Hmm, wonder what's going on with that. We're gonna have to work on that somewhere. Hmm. Can you zoom yep. in I'm and then maybe it'll... Go. like the autofocus just decided to there you go yeah stop all right um so uh okay is there anything else we want to add about embroidery i feel like there was something and i'm just drawing a blank i uh both the uh the letters and or the designs work the same they have the same concept absolutely so you're um, going to need more yarn so uh, even less don't run away from your design because you need to make sure that that's feeding really smoothly mm -hmm. um, and you don't get any pulls um, of missed area Absolutely. in there. So super, super important that you don't have um, any really tight points where it's not feeding smoothly into the machine because mm -hmm. you will get a gap in the design. Yep. Um, and it's super sad when you're <laughs> finishing oh, your yeah. project and it's like not what you were expecting. <laughs> exactly. Um, so... Um, Let's do that before we forget. Yeah. What say you? I think that is a great <laughs> idea. Um, there, re there really was something else I was going to say, but I don't have a clue what it was. Okay. Well, if I come up with it, I'll we'll bring remember. it up. Yeah. Yes. If it comes in. So, so embroidery. Um, embroidery. Um, with the built-in designs. With the built-in designs. If you create know. your own embroidery designs, um, you would be doing the same concept. Yep. Um, and again, setup is the same, but again, slow down your slow machine. Slow down your machine. Um, oh, I know. Uh, well, maybe not. Very, very briefly, and I'm not going to go into detail. If you do not have these specific tools, the um, the couching foot guide, uh, the 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 piece for the yarn mm -hmm. will fit on all of the nine and a half. Um, there's a, a, a square yeah. that those will go in. So if you have a Dream Destiny um, X, J, X, E, um, Altair, or uh, Meridian, mm -hmm. all of them have that same square where the, the yarn guide sits. They all have that. Um, so the, those tools, you could purchase the tools and, and use that. You would not have the built-in designs in the machine, mm -hmm. um, but you would be able to get the tools that would make that super easy to actually stitch in the hoop. Yeah. All of the pieces would flow very, very easily for you. If you are in a machine that's smaller than that and you really want to do this, it is possible, but it is not. You kind of have to hold on. It, it is, it's kind of a workout. So, you know, when everyone says that, you know, we don't have to exercise to embroider. This one would be. So you would literally be moving the thread because there's nothing. Um, you need to make sure that it's flowing freely and you would have to be moving it. So I don't want to go into detail of that because it's a whole nother ball of wax. But I do want to express that if you are really interested in this technique, but you have a different machine and you aren't in the realm of being able to get into one of those that can Give us a call. We can talk about some different options for you and, and, and help you figure out how you could do that. Yep, so, absolutely. Um, don't like um, apologies that we're not going to go into details, but we're not excluding any of you other uh, machine owners. Um, right. It is possible. It's just 
um, a little bit more difficult and a little bit more of a workout. So, right. Um, and maybe we're not using all of the pieces and parts exactly as they're intended, which is why we are not going to videotape that. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, yep, what she said. So, that would um, be do as I say, not as I video. Uh -huh. <laughs> So, um, again, if you are of the uh, different machine variety, mm -hmm. and um, and I mean that in really any brands as well, mm -hmm. um, give us a call. We can have that conversation. We just, we're not going to show how to inappropriately use these different things. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, that's embroidery. That is embroidery. Um, so, everything else we're going to do is sew. Yeah. So why don't you hit that? We'll move this and I will have a little bit more room to maneuver here. Will do. And um, what one do you want to do first? It doesn't matter. Do you, I, you want me to help? No, it's fine. Okay. I just couldn't quite get there. I feel bad. I'm the lefty. You're struggling over there. Yeah. All right. We have, let's just do regular sewing feet. What do you say? Yeah. All right. I buried that. And so when I use the regular sewing feet and I'm using like the thinner threads, um, the uh, instead of like the thicker yarns, um, I always pre-thread my foot <laughs> so before you put it on the machine? Before I put it on. Now, why would you do that? Um, and then I tie a little knot on the back of that so that I don't accidentally get them all in and then pull them all off. <laughs> so am I missing any? I have done that before. Nope, I think that's it. All right. So this was the other one that, um, so we said we would talk about this. Yeah. You said, I would never do that. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's the only one I have out of all of those. So that's why I would use that. So um, we've talked about the double cording foot. We have. Um, the reason I own it is because of zippers. Yes. Um, and I also don't have any of that fancy dancy, um, whatever you called it. Yeah. We've called it a couple different things yes. already. So the double cording foot um, is got the two grooves in it. We used it for zipper attachment mm -hmm. um, many, many weeks ago. You want to show it on sure. that one? Um, so there's two grooves on the back there. So your yarn can go through. This is the it smaller. It helps if I'm on the right yep, one. It does. There we go. So there's the two grooves. Um, it's definitely not the ideal foot, but mm -hmm. you know, flip your foot over, see what you have in your repertoire of goodies and um, choose what you have from there. So this is what that foot is. Um, right there's the sweet spot the double cording foot, the smaller of the two. Mm -hmm. I happen to own that one. I don't have anywhere near as many feet as you do. Um, this one. That is the mini piping foot. And I think this is one I'm gonna need to own. Yeah. Um, I just don't because I don't do a lot of sewing. I, everything I do is in my embroidery hoop. This is my favorite foot when I'm doing like yarn like we have up here. Because you can see kind of the Y. It smooshes, like put a piece of yarn through um, that little groove. So you can see that it like smooshes right in there in kind of like the sweet spot um, and then flows through really well. So um, with, if I am going to do couching, um, there's several reasons why I like this. It's clear. So you can see what's um, happening. I can see what I have, um, what fabric I have underneath. Um, I can see it right through that particular foot. And um, it's easier for me to like turn and, and do things like that because I have um, all the visibility. I can I also I can see the, the thread underneath. No. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Or you could just like lop that section off. I know. At like the spool and then we could find, and then we could work backwards. <laughs> it's just, it was there. I used it last night. <laughs> it's got to be there. It's like got to be there. Whatever. All right. So. Now you end. Now I got an end. All right. So. 
Um, and that one, the screw on the front of the foot um, makes the hole bigger or smaller. So if you have ever purchased the circular sewing attachment, um, that foot and this foot um, come in the circular sewing attachment. So if you, um, if you ever took like Stitcher's Garden with me, I know a ton of people bought that circular sewing attachment. Um, if you've never actually used it since then, these two feet are in your box and they are really a lot of fun to do um, couching with the, uh, a variety of different things. And the, there's a screw on the front of this foot which makes it so that the hole where the yarn is going through um, can be bigger or larger. Um, Miss Beth, I like the, um, the clear one, um, which is the mini piping foot. So this one is called the braiding foot. That is the braiding foot, yes. And this I one is do the have the box over here yep. for that one. So um, you can buy it separately, but if you bought a circular sewing attachment, it's in there. So don't buy it a second time. Don't buy time. it again. Unless you just want to have. Unless you really want to. Or you want to buy one for me, because I don't have one yet. <laughs> I probably have more than one of these. <laughs> so anyway, that's the braiding. All right. And then um, this one was the mini piping, was that clear plastic. Yeah. Again, just for clarification. And that's got that Y shape, super easy to feed on the back there. Yeah. So what I owned at home, um, which is why that's the pictures that mm -hmm. were in there, um, was because I had that double cording. Yeah. Um, which has a, a guide. It's not quite as tight, so it would be a little more loosey goosey. Yeah. But you do have your full range of. Um, you can seven millimeter mm -hmm. movement yep. that you can move your needle. So you could have a, you know, a blanket stitch going to the, way the left yeah. or the right, depending upon which side Absolutely. of the foot you were using. So, I mean, you can make it work. Yeah. Which sometimes that's the name of the game is what can I make work, right? That's right. And so, so for couching, we want to have um, either a guide on the top or we want to have a guide on the bottom. We want something, something. that will help the, the yarn or the string or whatever it is that we're going. We want something that will help it stay underneath the area where we are actually going to be sewing because that's one last thing that I have to hold on to. Yep. Um, it, if you're doing free motion um, embroidery and you're just moving things around, it's not as... Um, it's not as hard because um, you're basically kind of just going all over the place. Um, the Is the pearl sequin foot the same as the mini piping foot? No. Um, the pearl um, and sequins foot is a little bit, um, it's, it's, the groove is a little it's wider. It's bigger. Yeah, um, this is very small. Um, uh, why don't you put a foot on here and I will go see if I can, I think we might have this we on, have the wall, on the and wall and I will grab the package so that you can yep. see the package. And I will not hit my knee. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Success. All right, so um, let's start with the braiding foot because we had the box there so you guys can clearly see that one. So again, um, I'm gonna leave the guide on the machine. Um, so here we go. I've got that guide. I'm just going to leave that there um, because I own it. I can use it. You don't have to have that. Um, and we're probably going to take it off here in a few minutes so that we can maneuver things around. But for right now, I'm just going to leave it as is. So I am threading the yarn through the braiding foot um, so it's gone up and through that hole, which is the guide here. Again, here is the screw that we can adjust. Um, can I get light enough? So this is the screw that can adjust to make the hole here smaller. And once we have everything where we want it, we can then attach that. It's just a lot easier to do that if you are um, able to move the foot around. <laughs> then definitely not so here is the mini piping foot box whoops wrong button i, I got too many it. buttons yeah i know um mm -hmm. so here is the box for the one that we are using going to be using today 
I put the braiding on since we already had that one. Okay. Um, and there is, again, that same same foot that we've got sitting over there. Maybe I should just leave that on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> so I can play with some more stuff at home. Lord knows I got plenty of yarn. I'm going to so, turn you into a foot junkie. Yet. Oh, maybe. <laughs> So um, those are um, some of the feet that we've got. I left that there for the moment. We can yeah, certainly take that off. Yeah, that's totally fine. Um, anyway, so we've got multiple things here. So, But we need to pick a stitch. We need to pick a stitch. Uh, and we don't want to do a straight stitch. We do not. Um, so so um, again, just for clarification, the straight stitch would only be selected if you are using your digital dual feed and that specific couching foot. Outside of that, you want something that has windshield wipers. It yep. has a left and right shift to it to make sure that you have plenty of catch um, so that you don't have to worry about getting um, that yarn attached wherever it is that you are trying to put it. Yep. Um, like the menu two on a lot of machines has a lot of um, like quilting and decorative type stitches in there that have movement. So um, a lot of times uh, we use those. So I'm gonna, I'm, I really like that serpentine stitch. So I'm gonna okay. just gonna select that first. Um, so the default setting on here is five millimeters wide by one millimeter um, in length, which is pretty decent. You really aren't gonna know if you need to adjust your stitch length until you, until start you sewing. actually start sewing with it. So, um, what do you want to sew on? Um, just, let's just grab some scrap. I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit for us. So, I think there you go. Do, 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 do. All right, we'll save our uh, our letters. Do I have trash? Do you? Do we have trash? Yep, it's way over oh, there. Oh, it's behind me. Okay. All right, so um, we have just, it's literally a square of fabric we're gonna sew on. I'm gonna double it so that it's not a single layer of fabric because you know, you should never really do that. <laughs> no. So you guys wanna hear a funny story? Yes. When I started working here. You got, you need this oval over, over I, there? I would just throw a single piece of fabric under there. and uh. Look at what this can do. And she was like, yeah, don't do that. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, but why? <laughs> so you should never do that. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. I never sewed that much. So you did more embroidery I, or clothes, right? Or clothes, right. which of course was always two layers, but yeah. I was just showing a stitch. So right. what di you know, difference does it make? Yeah. It makes a lot of difference. It does. Yeah. <laughs> it needs to have some place to bury. Even it two does. layers sometimes doesn't uh, bury um, the stitch real well. Yeah. So especially decorative uh, stitches. Um, I'm going to put my foot down and give it what for. Um, anything you want to add? No. Okay. Let's just, um, I don't know if we're f close enough or far enough. We won't really know until we start yep. stitching. One millimeter is pretty, it's pretty close. So yep. we're just going to give us a little wiggle room up there. All right. So I am going to leave that guide there, but I'm going to pull it so that it's coming in the front of me so that I can see what's going on. I'm just going to stitch a straight line. I'm not yeah. going to go crazy here. We're just going to stitch. Um, so. Oh, do you want to go a little um, further? Yeah, that's maybe. That's a little too slow. I, yeah, even that's even slow for me. That's so. You can see the um, serpentine stitch coming. Well, maybe you can't because that guide's right in the way. <laughs> can they see they can it start to see it now, yeah. All right. So um, we're sewing really slow. Again, this isn't a race. You want to make sure that everything is staying aligned um, and moving properly where you want it to go. That's really spaced out, but I think it's okay. It's yeah. probably, um, it's doing what it needs to do. And when I get to the end, I am going to reinforce at the end of my seam. Um, but what you don't necessarily want to do is cut everything right there. 
So um, raise your foot, raise your needle, and um, give some length to begin again mm -hmm. so that you're not um, getting that raw edge. You want to have be yeah. able to tie that in. You don't want to have either thread or yarn be... Um, so I'm going to, I changed the stitch to a blanket stitch. Okay. So you don't want to have either your thread or your yarn be um, cut right at the edge of your fabric because then you it's going to come unraveled and exactly. you're going to have some issues. I did reinforce, but it's only going to do so much on that yarn. Exactly. There's, you know, multiple um, pieces in there. So you want to make sure that you've got um, stuff to work with when you're tying in and, and finishing later on. All right, so we are now going to do a blanket stitch. Oh, I didn't pick this simple one, I don't think. But. That's all right. Just gonna try to stay balanced from uh, where we were before. This is even slow for me. <laughs> <laughs> then sometimes um, decorative stitching. Do you want me to stop? Yeah, I was gonna. I'm gonna just pick a couple different stitches, so you can keep going. Good? Yep. All right, so we're changing stitches partway through here. The machine is really smart. Um, if I were to just literally change the stitch or the length or the width of this while I'm going, if I touch the screen, it's automatically going it's to stop. stop um, but if I were adjusting this and the needle were, was in the down position, it would be fine. The machine is smart enough to not actually move anything until it comes back up. Most electronic machines are. Yeah. It's just a habit. Yeah. Not necessarily a bad habit. No, but just to let you know, if you do um, change that, you're going to be fine. So again, raise, pull out the back, and then turn to wherever else you're going to go. So um, if I, oops, I missed one of them. Show that on the other screen, maybe? Sure. Or, Doesn't matter. Yeah. All right, so this is our original guy here with that serpentine, which certainly catches very easily. You can see that that braiding foot is keeping that centered. There's really almost nothing I had to do except mm -hmm. making sure that it wasn't getting pulled tight. Exactly. I was just keeping it loosely fed into the front of the foot. Um, on the second seam, we started with a blanket stitch. It's much tighter, but it gives a very different look. And you can see again with that red thread, whether you're trying to make the stitch pop mm -hmm. or whether you're trying to make it blend, what it is that you're really looking to have your decorative piece doing. So are you just attaching the yarn or do you want the contrast, the contrast the or, yeah. or what, you know, what is it that you're trying to do? And then this is that feather um, type stitch that we were talking about earlier or one of them many. Mm -hmm. What do you need, dear? Uh, I don't think they're here yet. Okay. We've ordered them, but... Uh, there's a bunch of boxes out there. Anything is possible. Um, so that is that, uh, or one of the feathering. There's certainly yeah other types in there, but this is a feathering type stitch here um, that you can see it goes forward motion at an angle and then um, gives you that little bit of yep. upward angled movement there. And that's just one of the speckles in the, the yarn. <laughs> In case somebody's like, what the heck happened there? Yeah. <laughs> that is the yarn that we have there. So that is the braiding foot. Super simple, um, almost foolproof. Mm -hmm. um, again, speed is not your friend. You Even it's hard to go slow, but you don't want to <laughs> go too fast no, when you're you sewing. So um, that would be um, how you would want to use that beautiful braiding foot. And, and again, honestly, every foot that you use for couching is gonna be the same concept. Yes. You are going to put your thread or your yarn or your uh, crochet uh, pearl crown ran, whatever decorative uh, option you are using, you will put it underneath your foot um, and then you will pick a stitch that has a left right motion and then you're going to stitch. So um, it, they all work exactly the same. Um, it's just what the what type of stitch is it that you're using? That's not what... I can't be fancy with that one. Do, do, do.
So this is that mini piping. I'm just going to do a quick run with that one, mm -hmm. and then we can keep moving. I know we And we're... we might, you know, like this one, um, we had that pretty wide, so I made it a little bit narrower. Cool. All right. So again, I've got a tail out the back here where you can see my thumb is at so that we've got something we can work in. I've done a, a reinforcement stitch just to keep everything secured at the edge of my fabric. And this is going under the foot, not over the foot. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different. I couldn't really feed it prior to putting the foot on. I mean, you can, but it's not gonna do you any good. No. It's gonna move. So you wanna make sure that you're nice and straight in alignment before you start stitching. And start going. And I'm just kind of trying to stay even with my uh, previous runs of thread and uh, yarn here. No real plan. <laughs> <laughs> So again, give yourself something to work with later on. Wow, that's really all over the place. And that is, woo, where am I at? There we go. Um, I like that a lot better, a little thinner, mm -hmm. personally. It's a little dark spot there, sorry. But um, comparative to, um, this top one was the wider stitch. Yep. Um, but you can see it stays right. I think that one I like maybe a little bit better yeah. as well. Yeah. It, it just fed nice and easy. Yep, it does. Um, they both fed pretty easy, to, to be honest. Yeah, so yeah. Whichever ones, um, if you happen to ha already have one. Um, but you can see those look um, really great. Super easy to do. Yeah, really. Lots and lots so of easy. So fun. And yes. you can really embellish so many things. You can. Um, yeah, just the lots hard of part is stuff. just getting the ends in. Um, so, you know, tying the knots. Yeah. A uh, little bit of fray to keep mm -hmm. it from unraveling is probably not terrible, but at the same time, it's only going to go so far because unraveling is kind yeah. of what yarn does. So, you need it to does. make sure that you've got um, right? a knot in place. Um, and it's tied in and sewn in somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, uh, all right, that is traditional sewing. Do you want to talk about that? Um, sure, yeah. Let's um, grab just um, just cut a couple of chunks of um, that off. I think this was the ends of the... <laughs> oh my And I don't goodness. care. Yeah, I'm just wrapped in like six million things yeah. over here. That should be good. So I'm just gonna cut it. And so we're gonna do um, like three here. So I'm gonna just cut, I'm just basically um, giving myself a couple of cords here. So we're using the thinner variegated fun. And we're gonna use the three um, cord foot. Yep. And I like to, I don't really care if these are perfectly straight or anything, but so I've got three strands here and I'm gonna start this out by tying a little knot at the back end of this. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because um, I- Once you get it threaded, you don't wanna unthread I don't wanna unthread it and I don't wanna lose one of my cords in between the two seconds that it takes me to <laughs> get my foot on do the you machine. One um, I you. For how, for how this one, you? you don't. So okay. um, I'm gonna slide over to slide back. Um, this one here, just so that you can see the two different styles here we have. So on this one, there is um, there's a, a sort of like a guide over top of this, and I can slide the threads in. I love this one because of that. Um, these are tiny little holes that I have to fish the, the thread through individually. Um, so I almost exclusively use this one, but to use this, this is really easy. So I take the knot 
and I put it underneath the foot and I hold on to it. So I just place my finger there. The threads come up over this like so and then I am just going to literally pop them in. So this is gonna slide in. Really? Yep. And I just pop that over. So there's huh. one and then How fancy is that? I just gotta get the other one to pop You're over. I am off camera. Yeah, there we go. It's easier to do when it's a little closer to you. So the thread just pops over and then the second one I do the same thing. I literally am just sort of popping that over. So there we go. There's a second one laid in. So much easier than the first one for me. <laughs> and then here we have this one. And again, it's just going to just pops right in that place. And this guide here holds all of those pieces um, in their proper place. I think I actually have two in one, but it, it won't matter. Um, so you can actually put more than three in here, but I've tied the knot so I won't just yank my threads back, back out. out. Um, and then I just snap this on. So the foot is, the thread is underneath my foot. And so I've got my foot on. You can see sometimes even when it's on here, um, because can I can give, yeah, I can give the thread a little bit of uh, uh, resistance in the back. So if something slides out, once it's in here, I can pop them into the, the places that I need. But you can see it kind of separates the three pieces. I think I just threw the foot back here somewhere. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we can slide this underneath here. And uh, I want to make sure that I'm working on a stitch that is going to be going um, the back. The width of your Yep, ride. back and forth um, for sure. So I have this one. Uh, the stitch that we're on is perfect, but I'm going um, to make it a little bit wider out. again. Yep. So this is the feather stitch. And I have this at five millimeters wide um, and the stitch length is at 2.5. So this is just the default setting of this particular stitch. So um, when I start stitching, I might need to make it a little bit wider, uh, but you kind of don't know until you start stitching. And I don't have to be super careful here because they're in their own slot. So they will sort of just braid um, kind of unfray themselves. Pretty slick. Look at that, guys. That, the red thread blends quite it nicely. It does, yeah. And then um, you can tie off if you want. Um, it's hard to get there, isn't I it? I know, yeah. Your uh, bobbin still. Yep. Okay. I missed it. So here we have those three threads in there dark on this camera for whatever reason. There, there you go. go. So that is um, the, uh, the three cording. Yeah. Three hole cording. Yep. And that's the one that comes in the Circle. circular sewing um, along with the braiding. attachment along with that braiding foot. Yeah. So it's a great little collection of stuff that you can use, but really um, super duper easy. So the um, other attachment piece is that uh, for sewing mm -hmm. is the um, digital dual feed. It took yep. me a second to say that word. I don't know why. <laughs> um, so this is the walking foot on steroids that comes with the higher end machines mm -hmm. and the sole um, that is available for that. And if you want to hit this. Mm -hmm. um, that is got the hole in the front to put your yarn in there. I think you can maybe there, there you go. go. Um, so there's that. So it stays literally right there. So with this one, um, you need to be um, 
something that hits center needle position. If you want to do a straight stitch, it will yeah. work with this, but this would be, again, the only thing that um, I would ever consider doing with, with that. Um, as we said and showed with everything else, you need that width to hold everything in place. It does and, hold it And make sure it catches. Um, and with this, you do have the opening, so you certainly can do um, a width stitch. Absolutely. If you want to, and it's certainly going to make it just a little bit easier to catch. Exactly, and depending on your yarn. Um, so sometimes right. if you were to stitch straight on a piece of yarn, it would be perfectly fine. It depends um, on how it's wound. Yeah. And, you, you know, if it's becoming unwound as you're stitching, it's not going to catch everything. So right. depending on the shape that your yarn is in, you know, we've been dragging this yarn all over the place and it's starting, you know, the ends are unraveling and, mm -hmm. and so Coming on. Coming unbraided. So um, if, if your parts aren't together, that single stitch is never going to catch everything. So mm -hmm. the width stitch is certainly um, always going to be your friend to catch everything. So, yes. but this is the only way that um, would recommend that. And if you haven't used this before, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Um, that just snaps on just like the others. So um, it's got those um, and this, again, that foot comes with the upgrade number one or machine two, excuse me, or higher, mm -hmm. um, Luminar or Solaris. And, and the snap-on plate is available for... It is available separately. Yeah. So any machine that has the digital dual feed foot... Can um, get that You can piece. get the, uh, the couching yep. adjust, uh, foot with it. And... Um, and it has come with a variety of machines. It so. did come with the Dream. Mm -hmm. um, I know I had one. Yeah. I never used it when I had the Dream, but it did come with the Dream. So I know it, it has come um, yep. with some things. So um, that is what I did this guy here for. We're not, I don't think we need to yeah. show that. It's certainly the same concept. Same so concept, absolutely. Put your, your foot on, feed your yarn, and stitch. So, yes. I mean, certainly no. Um, but you can see that I didn't sew in a completely straight line, and it worked perfectly um, mm -hmm. with that, that dual feed definitely feeds everything and keeps everything where it's supposed to yeah, be. Yeah, with the belt, the yarn kind of just kind it of just stayed holds it. right yeah. there. So um, everything went right where I wanted it to go. So um, really nice way to do that. So the last thing is this beautiful box here. So. And if you were to ask me what the hardest way to do couching is, I would tell you it's free motion quilting. And the reason, in my opinion, that free motion quilting, couching, it, it, yes, you have too many things, um, is because a lot of people, a lot of people struggle with free motion quilting anyways. So if you don't do free motion quilting well, um, just picking up the couching accessories in the hopes that you're going to do free motion quilting um, it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't, it doesn't equate, it doesn't equate. No, you, you have to kind of have a rhythm of standard free motion quilting, um, before free motion quilt, quilting, um, with couching, uh, helps otherwise, uh, cause you really have to have a fluid motion. Right. And I was just going to say that fluid motion is important just for free motion quilting period. Yes. And the starts and the stops are not your friend with that at all. Right. So making sure that you have the free flow of yarn, making sure that your yarn is where it needs to be mm -hmm. is just one more piece. So if you struggle with free motion quilting, this is not going to magically fix those other problems. No. Um, however, all of the tools that are here are wonderfully set up and it does have um, a specific guide mm -hmm. on the foot to keep the yarn where it needs to be so that yeah. it is being caught by your stitches. Mm -hmm. And then you do have the guides that go on the machine to keep it in line. Yes. So in theory, if you are a phenomenal free motion quilter, yes. this should be a no fun yeah. and um, wonderful experience for you. Yes. But if you're struggling with the one already, this might not be the, the set for you. Yeah, and part of the reason why um, this is, I guess, in my opinion, not as easy as it could be. Um, can you, op do you have the foot open by chance? This? Yeah. Um, or can you zoom in on the the part where the foot is so they can see the needle position holes? Okay.
Okay, it's just a cardboard box for crying out loud. <laughs> All right. Can you see through the plastic? Because it's I think taped so. and stapled shut. Yep. So you have uh, three holes, right? But you do not have a wide open space there. And so what we've been talking about is how much easier this is to do if you are doing a zigzag stitch. And you do not have a zigzag option in there. Um, you can zigzag, but you have to make sure that your zigzag is wide enough to literally go in one hole. And, and then into the, the other. And, and then to the other. Um, when I do couching by free motion, I use the accessories that come with this foot, but I use the clear echo foot mm. because it allows me to actually do, do a stitch. zigzag stitch. So I don't actually use yeah. the free motion quilting foot. Yeah, these accessories are, are great because you've got the piece that goes in the top with yep. the square. So that takes it from the top of your machine down to the side. Uh -huh. And then you've got the side piece that keeps it into the foot. Yes. But, um, Oh, here's that beautiful threading wire. Yeah, there's your threading there's wire. There's the threading wire that I lost. Um, so that's the original mm -hmm. um, version. You can see how easy that is to lose. And so. um, can you open the, um, the, the wire threading, not the little one, but the one that goes on the back of the foot? That one. If I'm not mistaken, I think that this will go in our standard feet too. I think that will poke into the back of these. It should. It's just um, like the other. It's, it it's shouldn't bigger, be. But uh, I think it should go in there. Too big. I'm going to do it from this side because I can see it. It's hard. Yeah. It's a hard stab. Oh, I pushed the whole thing out. Maybe. Nope. Too big. Too big. Good to know. Good to know. You can't cheat and put this in the other <laughs> hole. I tried. We tried. So this is specific for this foot. Maybe some other foot that's got that hole in it, but it's not your regular. Yeah. It's not the regular one. All right. So that is the free motion accessories. Um, I was not going to, because this is a new foot, I was not going to sew on this. Were you going to? No. Okay. And I don't own this one, so I don't have an open one. All right. So, um, so free motion quilting, free you motion have to be quilting. in left, center, or right needle position in order to use that foot. Grab that hole yep. in the correct or you have to make sure that you are using a zigzag stitch that literally bounces your needle from one hole to the other because it is not completely open in the center like our standard, um, like the digital dual feed other, foot was yeah. or um, some of our other traditional, yep, yeah, that opening at the bottom where the needle position is, is positionable, yep. um, but not um, completely open. Yep. Yep. So yep. you do have to be cautious where you are putting your needle in there for that particular part. Um, so. Which makes it, um, you're using a straight stitch. It's a little more challenging. And it's a little more challenging. So, so again, you have unless to, you are a um, experienced free motion quilter yes. that you are very comfortable um, and then adding in that additional piece, mm -hmm. it's probably going to be the more, definitely going to be the more difficult way to do all of these things. Yes. Um, and uh, master one before you add the second. Absolutely. So um, do, it's Is been there, pretty quiet over yep. here. I think that Are we have answered. Any other questions that we can answer? I know. <laughs> so, um, uh, we are having the in-person class on this. Yep. So um, if you would like to come bring your machine and play and be able to ask us questions while you're playing, um, we will have an in-store option. Mm -hmm. And um, it's kind of designed for our Luminaire and Solaris customers. Um, but I believe if you have a dream or a destiny 
um, and you have maybe some of the standard couching things and you have some specific questions about that, um, we could definitely um, work that into uh, the equation. We'll be talking about a little bit uh, hands-on stuff that we did in yep. here, which may not equate to your machine. But um, again, if you want some hands-on experience with this, um, and if you have a different machine and you really want some hands-on experience, um, the best way for us to answer the question of whether or not it would be a good option for if you. it's gonna help you. Is just give us a call and ask to speak with either Lisa or myself, Sarah, um, and then we can uh, determine whether or not um, it, this will be a, a good option for you. Right. Um, we intend to have people come in the store, and while we're not doing like a particular project, our goal is to kind of walk you through uh, the different, basically let you do, do what we just did. What we just did. So right. we can start with the sewing concept here and give you guys um, a little bit of hands-on experience. Um, you know, uh, that's a pay for class if you didn't purchase your machine from us or your upgrade. Um, uh, if you did um, and you paid for the class, uh, we will give we you will uh, a, re a yep. A we'll reimburse you. Or reimburse the punch. The punch. Yep. Absolutely. So um, we'll it'll punch, become yeah. uh, free for you <laughs> yes. um, as well. And that is next week. Twenty fourth. Next week, Friday, right? I don't I have my calendar. Yeah, I think it's next week, Friday. We've got one on the 24th and one on the 28th. So, yes, yeah, yep. Friday and then the 24th the edge to edge and is the, the following edge to edge is the 28th, Tuesday. that following Tuesday. Yep. So, um, I think that is basically all we have to talk about I'm with warming couching. Up. They're turning you're, green. You're turning green, yes. I'm turning green. <laughs> So we thank you guys for spending this almost two hours almost. with us. Um, it's a lot of fun, and we love to be able to share uh, these fun things Absolutely. with you. And uh, if you start playing around with these, um, make sure that you uh, send us some pictures. Send us some pics of what you've done. Yeah. That, you know, that is one thing that I, I don't know about you, but I certainly miss is yes. seeing what you guys are doing because um, so many of you, we, we have reopened the classroom. If anybody is not um, aware, you know, yeah, we, we've, we've got in-store things, so mm -hmm. we'd love to have you come and join us, but um, if you can't or you just got so used to not lugging your machine and you don't want to start doing that again, please we understand. send us, we <laughs> absolutely understand, but please send us pictures of what you're doing because I really miss that. Yes. Um, it's, it's always fun and, and uh, you know, sometimes we need inspiration too because, you know, we get bogged down by the work, so, mm -hmm. you know, it's, sometimes we need to be, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. You know, so we'd love that. to see that. Yeah. So please, please um, share. Oh, and really quickly, uh, Roxanne uh, asked what time on Friday. 10 it's at 10 o'clock. Yep, so, so we'll start at 10, and there's no real end time. It's going to be more a um, open sew kind of set up but mm -hmm. we'll we'll walk you through some some basics of okay let's let's work on this and let's work on that and then you guys can kind of do your thing mm -hmm. um so um there are still spots available yeah. um if everybody signs up after this and it becomes full we'll open another date yep, so um sure. if that becomes necessary so and we will send a supply list out um a couple of days before class yep. um with anything that we uh we think that you might want to bring in um and we'll let you know the things that we have um there yep. really won't be anything that you uh shouldn't already own that right you we'll, need we'll to bring use, in. which is why we said it was kind of geared towards the luminaire and the slars because we know you guys have those. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, that is the idea. But again, if you don't have those and you want to come, give yeah. us a buzz and we'll see if we can. Absolutely. We can have some fun with sewing because there's two of us. So um, absolutely. All, all right. right. We'll see you guys next time, which is tomorrow morning at 10, if you would like to do all of this with Edge to Edge. Yep. So we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.